Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour for Monday, the 1st of April. So uh, the Dow is down 173 at 39,634, having made an all time high on the 21st of March at 39,889. Try to retest it on Friday. But what's really important about what we're looking at currently is that by just a hair, the Dow weekly chart made a peak C. So there are a whole bunch of questions here. If, in the Chapman Way methodology, if the peak C, that's the third highest peak after the starting point, the low starting point, is a very sharp, lengthy, and uh, not constrained, it's kind of a wide pullback, when it finally turns around and goes to a D, either you're looking at a double top, or if that D is a new breakout to quite a bit higher high than that peak C, the Chapman Wave uh, technique that I'm teaching here, then what happens is so often that D has within one or two bars a peak and then goes to an E. And that says, hey, this could be an instant restart and the whole thing, even though whatever, daily, weekly, monthly, doesn't matter, could go to higher highs. If in fact what we see is just a stalling pattern, and I have to go to the what I call the benchmark here, and that's the SMHs, which are having a nice move up, 4.56 at 229.56, um, that has kind of stalled but this is a very good move today. Is it Taiwan Semiconductor? Yeah, Taiwan Semi, maybe a couple of the uh, uh, semiconductors that are moving up. But Taiwan Semiconductor made a high at about 159, 157, I think it was. Let me just check. It had a, a round number just before that high, right? And then it went 144 open on the 7th of March screens to 158.40 on the 8th of March, and it hasn't come even close to that. It comes all the way down to the 134, 133.03 level, and now it's just kind of bouncing. I'm not sure this is a consolidation that's going to start to make a new all-time high at this particular point, but we'll just let this play out now. A couple of things that I'm looking at is, let's go back to uh, the order that we're going. We're going to the Dow first. So the Dow Weekly has made a peak C. The, this is very important. The S&P Weekly fails so far to take out the 5264.85 high of Friday. The high so far today is 52.63.95. <laughs> it's just uh, less than a point away from an all-time high. This is a, a leg C. Remember, a leg C means that even by one penny, you make a new recovery high. Um, in this case, you've got the 22nd, week of the 22nd of March, you've got a high of 5261.10. Uh, the next week, 29th of uh, March, you get a high of... 52, uh, 64.85. And today, so far, the day is very young because you can see buying is coming in. Uh, you've got a high of 52.63.95. You've got all week to go to 52.64.85 to extend or higher to extend this leg C. All right? That's the first thing. The second thing is that the weekly chart, monthly chart has already made a leg D. So I need to talk about this because we do have new uh, new people to uh, study the Chapman Wave or have already done that and just need to review. So the whole thing is that peak B that was made on the 1st of January 
of 2022 at 4818.62 because there's no other way to count the low of 2191.86. The 20th of March of 20, uh, March of 2020, so that was a big B and I spent a, a real year saying there are two ways to look at this. Because it hardly, there's hardly ever a failure in a monthly chart at a peak B, unless it's an IPO. But it's just, it, it's, it's so seldom. I'm not even sure I can count on one hand because I wouldn't be able to remember that. But what I am going to say to you is that if underneath that peak B, there was a peak A, peak B, peak C, and then a peak D under 48.6, that would take preference. And that would negate this B here because you've already got to a D. However, we're in a leg D. We haven't made a peak D. If we buy, we've got the whole month to go to 52.64.86. That extends the monthly chart of leg D. If it doesn't do that, if it fails right from now, that means we've got the whole month to try to get to that 52.64.85. Look at the QQQ. Monthly chart, leg B, still early in the game because it should still get to a leg C, peak C. A leg D and then a peak D. And that'll have to take, we've got all of April to get to 490, no, 449.34. So 449.34. Let me just type that in, 449.34. One penny above, no, if you go right to 449.34, that extends leg B in the weekly chart. And if you go one penny above it, that continues that leg B. If all of April, we do not get to 449.35, that will become a peak B. Uh, no, not if we go to 449.34, because that just extends your leg B. So anything underneath that, one penny below 449.34 says, uh-oh, you finally made a peak B. You got all of April. How many days? How many trading days in April? Well, they're quite a full. There are 30 days in April. How many trading days? Well, subtract your weekends from that. Okay. So this is fascinating. Why? Because this is good action in the nine period moving average over the... I, I need to do this, but I'm not going to do it now. Look, the nine period moving average is over the 14 period moving average, and that's just a really bullish sign in the daily, really bullish sign in the weekly, really bullish sign in the monthly on the QQQs. Let's go to the IWM, Russell 2000, beginning of the week. We want to be as thorough as possible. Chance of a, uh, um, a double top, 210.41 was the high in mid March, uh, 211.68 was Friday's high, and uh, that's a, less than two points above. And now you're pulling back. Um, what I wanted to say about the, the uh, QQQ is that the stochastic was a little bit weak in the MACD. It was the nine period over the 14 that was still impressive. And lo and behold, what do we have? The same thing right here with the IWM, the Russell 2000. Have a look at this. Yes, the Russell 2000, IWM. Yes, the Russell 1000, IWB. Look at that. Hasn't made a new all-time high. Just under Friday's high, 288.56 was the high today. And it's a point, but it's complicated. 288.75. Huh, unbelievable. It's less than this, uh, 20, 20 cents away from an all-time high. I'll be back. Dow's up. Uh, Dow's down 179. SP's up three and a quarter. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50% and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, folks, we're back. And then just uh, earlier in the, uh, when I did the 10 o'clock update, I mentioned that Triple M was down very sharply. And then in the den, uh, was it Jeff? Jeff said that, uh, no, Triple M is a spinoff. Yeah. Formerly 3M healthcare business, uh, Solventum, uh, SOLV, on the New York Stock Exchange, enables better, smarter, safer healthcare to improve lives. Okay, that's, uh, that, that explains that. All right, that's important. I wonder how GEH, G -E -H -C is doing right here. Uh, down a little bit today. It's done very nicely. It was a spin-off back at, uh, I think, December of 2022. And comes out at about the 55 level, screams up, and now it's up, but it's already gone into the high 90s. It's a 90 right now. Oh, good action, very good action. Okay, so this is what I was looking at. So a question came up. I don't know if it was a question or a statement about a two-click session. I was absolutely sure that there'd be a two-click session today. I did get in on the short side on the E-mini at the 28 level, uh, 53.28. Uh, but I, I just had one down because I, I let it go down to, and then I got out thinking it would be, but I was so busy with my newsletter that I just thought, eh, I, I'll have to do that. But I think I've missed an opportunity here because the Dow's now down 221. We still short the Dow. Uh, the Dow's down 221. But Fletch says in the den, U.S. ISM manufacturing PMI, March actual, 50.3 versus 47.8 previous estimate of, uh, was 48.3. Better than estimates, better than the prior results, and officially in expansion territory. So this is really important because what I was talking about uh, in my video to subscribers on the weekend is that it looked to me like yields Everything about the yields say that they really want you to go higher. And I've been a, a, a number of um, 
people who manage money that I, I've spoken to over the last uh, six, seven months, the the kind of concept, the, uh, almost everyone that I'd spoken to were not technical analysts. And they all said, just parroting what they hear all the time, oh, yeah, yields should go down, yields should go down. And I said, then, wait a minute, we've had a 40-year bull market in the bonds. Surely you can expect three, four years maybe of at least it doesn't have to break to much higher ground, but higher yields. Oh, no, the Fed's not going to do that. I, you know, when the when the ISM comes out, uh, I I think this is telling us that you've got to be a little careful here, and that's the reason why I'm saying that. Now, let me go back to this. I, I wasn't going to do it, but until I saw uh, Fletcher's posting, and now let me show you this here. This is the idea. Yeah. Okay. And what we're looking at here is. The Chapman Wave Dark News Index uses the daily Dow chart. And I said, I don't have anything here. Uh, unlike every one of these back in April, a year ago, April 14th of a year ago, I said, something's not right here. We're getting high heels. We've got, uh, you know, there are, a lot of, um, there are a lot of areas of the economy that are just a little shaky here. And you can see we had that sharp pullback, same thing in or in July, the 26th of uh, 26th of uh, July the of 2023. DNCC, I said, Dark News Cloud Cover. And, and this has got nothing to do with the candle, Dark News. Uh, this is important because it pulled back and pulled back again uh, back in August uh, the 31st. of, And this one, I said, all I can do is I can put the rectangle in to say, I think we're going to go sideways. And that's kind of what we've done every time. But I don't see anything that really stands out to me to say, hey, watch out because this is going to be a much more serious uh, situation. Last week, I said, I think I'm beginning to see it, but I really need proof, and I haven't got it yet. So even though I'm anticipating that the 40,000 level, or 39,900 in the Dow is going to be some kind of resistance, there's still a mixed market. But if bonds t uh, really take a downturn, and the yields take an upturn, that's going to be a breakout that says to me, you've got to be a little careful here. It's not, it's selective, it's not everywhere. But this is what I'm looking at right here. I think we're in a situation uh, where even though it's selective, the fact that, let me get out of this. Right here, let me get out of this and, and show you the chart right here. If I can get the mouse moving, there it is. Come on, a little mousey. Okay, thank you. If I can show you that the TNX, TNX.X, always do that. Wrong chart, right there, right chart. Got it. Uh, TNX.X, there it is. Look, that's starting to push to high ground, and it looks in the weekly chart with the MACD crossing positive stochastic at 78%, so close to 80%. The, for th two weeks now, almost three, We've had the nine period moving average in the weekly chart crossing positive. This is the 10 year T note. Seems to me that this is attempting to push above the high that was made of 43.54 the week of the 23rd of February. If that happens, I think that we're looking at a situation that says, although the general market has been making all time highs, just momentarily in the last, I'd say only three weeks, because up until about the third, about three weeks ago, uh, we were broadening out in the market. We were seeing the uh, Russell 2000. Uh, we just a uh, general broadening out, even the IWC, which is the micro caps, iShares micro cap ETF, was doing very nicely. Now it's made a little double top here. So as I'm looking at this right now, I think I see some of the ingredients that says that we could have some kind of a digestive phase in April. And if that's the case, it's not going to happen on a very serious note. You're looking at maybe 3 to 5% on a pullback. I don't know yet if it's bigger. Until these semiconductors, 
really pull back sharply. They're the leaders. They're the ones that take us up and take us down. And right now, the semiconductor is up 5 at 230.08, walking the line period, moving average. We have to wait for something to tell us that they are becoming vulnerable. My weekly chart says keep an eye on that because that is becoming vulnerable as a chart that I monitor, chart pattern that I monitor very closely. But price is price, and right now it's up very strongly. That's the reason why we've got a very mixed market. Okay, I did all that, did all that. Just wanted to quickly go to uh, gold. Uh, gold is now up 15. Now, this is kind of why I said to subscribers, not today. We're not going to uh, try to enter gold. We did have a gold stock. We got out of it. We even had the GDX at some point. That's the gold miners got out of it. They both dropped sharply. I haven't got in with this rally, but I think we will get in. I'm waiting for a pullback. And this leg D in gold right now, and a leg D in the weekly chart says to me, it's much, I, I think I can't just talk about it. I have to show you the chart. Look, here's the monthly chart. See this U-shaped pattern that makes a W formation? That very often says that the high that you, you get to becomes quite formidable resistance. And that would say that this whole area of the 2300s in gold, what was the high today? 2286.4 in the continuous contract. That's something to be monitored. And it's not a problem if it takes a bit of a breather. For those of you who are interested in gold and silver, not so much silver, but gold right now, I think you get a pullback and you'll be able to choose. I'll be back. Dow's down 240. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. 
Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Question about CIFR, Cypher Mining, trading at uh, 474, down 41 cents. Yeah, my, uh, and uh, listen, to add to, did you say, Basil, an entry point? An entry point, uh, because you have the patience, uh, Peaky, to, to sit out some kind of a pullback, and because the monthly chart has been making peak A, B, C, D, and even a leg E as we speak in a very short period of time, over a period of a year and a quarter, not even a year and a quarter, um, and it has no more than about a couple of months of uh, digestive phase after it makes the peak, I'm going to say to you, because gold has accelerated now, and even though, I mean, it's had just a big move, even though it gave back 150 points, it's still a big takeoff from where it was. I'm not sure yet that the exact reason I know it could be currency and all, the, all those things that go into it. But I actually see it as something else. I think it's the, I, I think it's more part of the Middle East than anything else. It's part of that that move that big countries, not big countries, not institutions, countries go for gold whenever they get a little nervous. And I think the buying of gold, uh, to me, it seems I mean, maybe it's India countries. Maybe it's not even to do with that. Maybe it's just the standard affair where they buy gold because. They think things are going to be a little, there's a little unrest going on in the United States. I'm not sure what it is, but that could be part of it. So I'm just going to say to you, I would put in, I put in a bid at about four, it's 476. At 452, and I try to plan that as an entry point with two, two entry points. One is at 452, but if it doesn't in the next three days, today's low is 462. If it doesn't hit 458 in the next three days, you might have to start a little position a little higher. I would have patience to wait. I think it's going to get there. And then I'd have in the 415 to $4 area, I just have something sitting there. It doesn't have to get there because you could move higher, then you're just going to take that, what you would have put in, put in a small amount uh, higher. That's all. But at this point, those are the levels I'd be looking at. And the 200-period moving average of 4.75 uh, in the weekly chart, that's going to be a magnet. It's done that before, but it never holds above there. This is the first time it's held for two weeks. Normally, it just goes in and fails. So that's giving you a good clue that in the weekly chart, this is a brand new A, leg B. So that's what I would do. And I, I'd, I'd enter in stages. I hope that helps you. Next question came in. Now, I, I don't have my email for some for some reason. It just got kind of messed up, and I have two different – I have three, actually, different email services, um, and the passwords, just something happened. So I've, I'm not getting anything yet. I'll have, it, uh, I'll have it all organized, I think, in the next two days. But I'm just going to guess that someone who always asks about the FXI, Gary – uh, is looking at it right now. That's the iShares China Large Cap ETF. So my suggestion the other day was that it's kind of digesting gains, big gains, that I'm not sure yet whether this is the big turn in because it's just had such a poor performance. But 2087 was the low in October of 2022. 20.86 was the penny lower, and that starts a brand new signal if it's going to be at all you can't use this one as your peak a and then take it from there this is now a new gray leg a in the monthly a peak b in the weekly chart magd uh is good stochastics running nicely is at 76 percent on balance volumes okay but what's really important is that the magd has started with histograms expanding nicely and the nine period moving average has not yet crossed positive so it's a work in progress and I'm very pleased to see that the last two sessions, Friday and today, were to the higher side. And that says now you can start talking about um, the cup formation that goes from the left side 
and then starts another one in the in the middle. It starts this next one right here. Look. So on the right side of that high, the gap up high, we started another move, and that just says if the 2444 level that it's at right now, 37 cents, if that can hold in the 24 today's lows, 2441. <clears throat> I'm going to go the whole day. If 24 38 is taken out, you've got to be a little bit careful because it start, could start to pull back towards Friday's high. But if it holds, and on Tuesday or Wednesday, it actually can go to 24.63 or higher, that means in the next week you're going to see the 200 period moving average of 25.14 become a magnet if it can get to 2514, if it can get to 2485. But as I see it right now, I think it's more just sideways, holding well so far, and that's kind of what I see. That's that one, and XPV, X, XPV comes up. Not sure if that's the question today, but I've got it. That's completely different. I did this last week. I don't, I don't think it was Thursday. I think it might be Wednesday. I said, I don't know how to pronounce it. <clears throat> Designs, develops, manufactures smart EVs. The pattern was encouraging. And then I said, there's a technique. Oh, now I'm now going to talk about it because I mentioned technique. <laughs> it's this technique right here. The Chapway falling axe, where the price goes up and then it stalls as the handle. And then you make lower highs and much lower lows. And then if you pull back sharply enough, it all of a sudden forms a base, and then it takes out that uh, that declining upper trend line. But if it does the same thing, and I turned this upside down, I took the same chart, and all I did is I reversed it. It's upside down now. You get a pattern that I call the introduction to the Chapman Wave inverted falling acclimation. In other words, you're making much higher highs, higher lows. It stalls, and then it arches over. In this particular instance, it, if it makes a dreaded H, it's usually at the first peak or second, peak A or peak B. If it goes on to D and E, that says be careful because there's a good chance that it could go towards the left side low. But if it holds above that and then rallies, that's very positive. This hasn't done that at all. It's done the exact opposite. It's just made lower lows and lower lows and lower lows and lower highs. So it's at 771 right now. Um, it's it's un unchanged or maybe up a penny, <clears throat> but it took out the left side low twice. It took it out on Friday. Oh, wait a minute. It might have done it three times. The low on the 5th of February was $7.80. $7.80, right? February the 5th. On March the 27th, it went to $7.75. So it took that out and closed under it, and it closed under it Friday, and today's low. Whoa, let me just see Tesla. Yeah, I, I just, I, right now I think the EV sector is going through a tough time, so it looks to me from the charts anyway. I'll be back, now it's down 246, 240, that's going to be down 7.87, big divergence. But I'll be back in a few minutes, and we will talk about crude oil. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50% and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model 
when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities. Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I just checked to see if the email box is back on here. So, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, if the cipher mining was a gold miner, it is a Bitcoin miner. <laughs> it looked like the same pattern for a moment there. Sorry. So that's uh, CIFR, and I, I, it was going to take me to Bitcoin n next, but uh, uh, looking at crude oil and Bitcoin. So let's just do this right now. There we go. So Bitcoin is trading <clears throat> a down 1,780 at 69,700. And what I drew in, I said there are two patterns that are fighting right now. My eye and the technicals are suggesting that the peak uh, GSSC at 74,415 of the continuous contract is going to turn out to be a G, and that we're going to make some form of dreaded H pattern where this arch comes back down. 65,000 will be very short term, major support. Uh, weekly, weekly charts suggest exactly the same thing, just kind of overboard, needs a bit of a breather. Could be time, could be price, could be both, as I'm looking at it right now. In fact, I looked at, I was going to look at the short side of Bitcoin, and I thought, that is so hazardous to one's health and wealth. It's kind of tough to do, but that doesn't uh, mean that I shouldn't do it. So I'm going to look into it a little bit more. Uh, I don't know if I do anything right now, but it seems to me that Bitcoin is overbought on a purely tactical basis. Uh, but you never know how these ground swells occur, how all of a sudden uh, buying pressure just pushes it and then short covering has to uh, allows it to, to even go higher. So I have to keep that in mind. But everything about this GBTC, same thing, that's the Bitcoin uh, fund, so it has the same pattern. Uh, coin is different. So coin is... Um, that pulled back and then made a slightly higher high. And I'm calling this just for the moment here, peak F, and this is G. So the other one, this is Bitcoin itself, you remember, had a G slash C, but the, the pattern here in the GBTC is different because just slightly different. So, uh, sorry, in coin, coin is slightly different because the others did not make higher highs. Coin did. So I have to consider this is a al possible alternate count. Probably isn't because the others are going to move. <clears throat> I've got this as a chance of a peak F in the weekly chart. I really think it's an alternate count, but I'll put it as an F. <clears throat> the MACD is very overbought. Stochastic is 
uh, very overbought. Doesn't mean to say that it has to tank. It says that the green line, the nine period differential, very often, look at that, shows you that it's making a turn. And I think the same thing is going to happen here. But it's still a very strong MACD. Stochastic said flat at 86. That's good. On balance volume is overbought. Nine period is over the 14, well over the 14 prices. So this could be just a consolidation. But for now, I'm calling Coinbase Global Inc. That's what it's called, right? Making a peak F right there. F and a G. But I have to consider that it could be an alternate count. So I'm just putting G and I'll put a question mark above it. Right over there. All right, so let me go back. I was going to look at oil. And oil says that it's holding not just well, but it is not giving an inch. Every time you think it's going to pull back, it just has a very modest pullback, holds the nine period moving average, uses the 14 as a springboard. Bam, it goes up. And today it's up 59 cents at 83.75. And what I'd said the other day was that CVX, <clears throat> CVX is uh, Chevron. Uh, was The monthly chart is starting to improve. The weekly chart has improved quite a bit. It's in leg C right now. The technicals are confirming the, the rally. And the weekly chart is in brand new A, B, C, D. In leg D at 158. And the other one was Mo ExxonMobil. In leg D right now, much better chart. This is a really good looking chart. Um, and then many of the uh, services we had uh, in the den the other day, MRO was discussed. Look at that. Very nice action. Stalling a little bit. It's had a fabulous move up. Can have a bit of a breather at 28.44. It's up nine cents. Um, and what was the other one? Someone put it in. Oh, it's one we have, rig, in the same area. This is. A uh, rig is um, Transocean Limited Offshore Drilling, Oil and Gas. Had an 8.88 high back in September of 2023. It came down to the 4.45 level, February the 20th. And it's had a lovely move. It's got an instant restart. It did this beautiful cup formation. Um, and with the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line, it went above it. And now it's in a leg D. So you can have a little bit of a pullback, but this is really good. It's good action, good response to the oil moving high. Let's see, I have a question as well about, oh, um, Microsoft. Uh, oh, no, it was Amgen. And uh, what's the question? What's pulling the market back today? Oh, and Microsoft is doing very nicely. It is up 3.98 at 4.24. Um, yeah, I, I like that. This is just really a nice looking chart. A peak C in the weekly chart, it should pop to a leg D at some point above the 430.82 high, uh, 24th of March. And the other one was, oh, and I should also mention we are long, we are long Microsoft and long uh, rig. And what was the, oh, a a Amazon. Amazon, Amazon is uh, up 16 cents at 180.55. Made a new recovery high. No, an all-time high today at 108. Oh, what can I say? 183.00. This is called this G slash C for the moment. G slash C. And the reason why I'm giving an alternate count because that 914 just hasn't given in at all. And the MACD is just barely positive. Stochastics at 80%, barely positive. On balance volume is a little bit overbought. So I'm putting that in. And lo and bold, it makes 183.00 round number all-time high. I couldn't tell you how many stocks have made a round number all-time highs. So let's just see. So the question, oh, Amgen. That's what the question was. It was uh, what are the weak stocks? Home Depot, Amgen. So Amgen right now is down a little bit, down 338 at 280.84. Not a great looking chart at all. It is trying to rally, and the 200 period moving average of 273 is that's going to be support in that area between 273 and 270. Must hold over the next week or two. What was that? One? Home Depot. Home Depot is oh. So this is going to be very interesting for me and my subscribers. What are we going to do with this? Home Depot is suggesting that the 396.87 high uh, around about mid-March is going to be a high at least 
in the short term, if not kind of intermediate term, but at least short term. Now, I've got to be careful with this because the springtime is when Home Depot sees all the home repairs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It is a peak D in the weekly chart, <clears throat> and it is a leg C in the monthly chart. But to put it together, let's go to Builders. This is the Builders... Oh, it's just called Builders First Resource. No, Builders First Source Inc., Building Materials, etc. Pulling back a little bit after the 214.70 all-time high, the date made a 209 round number low, and now it's at 207.01. Not giving very much away. Isn't that interesting? I'll be right back, Doug. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, EME, manufacturer of advanced real-time data acquisition systems, MCOR, is that correct? Oh, wait, MCOR, I should have put MCOR. I'm not sure it's the same company. Uh, EM core group <clears throat> mcore mechanical electrical construction that's very different is a global leader in mechanical electrical construction services facilities services energy infrastructure hmm well look at this almost an all-time high it's looking fantastic but my eye says based on the technicals that the whole area 351 72 right now per dollar 52 uh, just be prepared that there's a little bit of a pullback uh, if the 345, 345 level uh, doesn't hold 
over the next two weeks, then the 338 level is bound to be tested. If it breaks and closes under 338, it's in for more time. Maybe not so much price, but more time. But it's in the right area. It's really, uh, it looks fantastic. But I just think that um, there's a really good chance. And it had a 348.00 round number low today. Once they saw with the round numbers, I always watch to see which way does it break. And if it breaks to the downside and closes under 346 very quickly, <clears throat> then it says just be a little careful. Okay, with that said, let me just say that I'm looking at this market askance. There's, there's a, such a divergence that you have to be respect that divergence. I'm watching the semiconductors because if they start to pull back sharply, I think that's going to impact the general market. If the yields, look at the TLT, the yields go much higher and the TLT is down, oh my, almost 2%. Uh, that just says to me, we now have the conditions that say the market could start to have a bit of a digestive phase because, and I, now I can say, yields are much higher and the SMHs are still strong. If they start to pull back, that's the second ingredient. I need three. The dollar is the third one, holding very well. Gold is a little... What a rest of the day, check out my opening call, daily newsletter.